Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I just uh, first apologize. There's gonna be some background noise, but it's a hot day, so I've got the AC going. But uh, so uh, I, <coughs> I've got a few more video segments I'm gonna show you of some of the troubleshooting and setup. But I wanted to preface this next video with some great feedback I got from people. They had noticed a few things that I was doing that were not helpful right here at this guy because I was tying the cathode together in the phase inverter that 2.2k also had a cap that was actually shunting all the signal to ground through here instead of letting it come into the second half therefore uh, uh, remo removing the fact that this was supposed to take that second half the cathode following through the DC long tail pair so uh, I removed that and that significantly helped I also on the version I showed had a couple 200k resistors here um, to ground because I'd seen that in a lot of other and I thought that might have been why I was having some problems but once I got this fixed, the output was really quiet, and I think I was shunting a lot of the signal to ground there instead of to the tubes. So I removed those, and uh, it does seem to have gotten a lot louder, uh, and things are a lot better. I also added this cap to ground here, and I've added another cap that's from the um, grid 2 down into the kind of tie-in at the anode uh, to help kind of stabilize the EF86. I got this all set up and running, and I don't think I recorded it because I started having a really weird squealing issue. If I put a sine wave into it, it sounded really good, but when I put my guitar into it, it would just start wailing and squealing. I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know if the tube itself has started to go funky because of maybe my testing and things I got were weird, or if there's something else going on. If anybody has any ideas, please let me know. But you'll see me kind of troubleshooting this before I actually added those in. Sorry, my wife's getting a call there, I think. Uh, but you, you can see uh, in the video what kind of pro problems I was having, and... Uh, a lot of those were solved by some of the changes you see here on this current schematic. But uh, I'm also going to have to kind of shelve this project for a little while because I'm using the output transformer for the next amp I'm going to build, and I'm going to start that process now in the next coming days and weeks. So, um, by the way, those of you that are kind of following along, that one is going to be a lot more detailed. I'm building a Vox AC30-4, so look, hopefully you'll be looking forward to uh, a much deeper, like, I'm going to really show off everything about how those builds uh, like everything I'm doing with it. So hopefully that will make sense to people in a way that uh, is a little deeper than what usually is there. I also want to again thank everybody for the input on this project. It's been a lot of fun getting input from people and learning uh, some cool stuff on my side and hopefully other people are also learning with these videos as well. So thanks a lot and uh, we'll let you see the rest of these videos now. Thanks. Okay, so here is my in another intermediate state, and yes, this is quite ugly. I haven't connected a lot of the main wires between power and ground, but the actual pinouts are plugged in now. Uh, I've got the, this is like a 2K between uh, the main input and the um, grid two, so that it gets uh, you know a slight drop in voltage between the two. There's 2K of those two. So those are just directly connected between pins, I think it's six and seven. And I'll bring power into, I think it was seven, if I remember right. At any rate, yeah, that's the main cathode, or the main anode. Um, and then uh, I'm jumpering uh, the ground of this one over to the ground here, and then I have this big, ugly rig going on here. What happened is I could not, at my local shop, I'm just, I just decided to kind of go buy all the parts. I needed to have, I was kind of shooting for a goal of a 22 microfarad, but all I had was a bunch of, they had a bunch of 90 farads, or well, they had nothing more than about 15 volts, so I need about 50 here, 30 to 50-ish range. So I instead got three in series so that it gives me that, but then I put them all 90 so I get about 30. So it's a little higher than I expected. But again, this is an experiment. If I find it doesn't work, I'll just order the right one. But for now, I just wanted to get all the parts and get it put together today. I don't think I'll get it on today, but in the next day or two I will. So, you know, sometimes you just go with what you've got. Other times you get a chance to buy everything. But since this is a prototype, I'll play with it. If it doesn't work, I will be able to adjust. But I also have the point one mic, uh, you know, that just jumper between the output of the... Uh, to triode stage and into the input of the uh, next of the of the phase inverter but then I also jumper a red one here over to through a one meg resistor to ground here that or not to ground but the one meg resistor I'm just assuming that one meg might be roughly a good value to try so that I reduce the output of the triode before it goes to the input of the next triode that's typically what you do when you do this kind of a um This type of phase inversion uh, is uh, you will have some kind of a resistor that reduces the output so that it comes back in inverted from what the first phase was but also not quite as hot as it came out of that first triode. Now that may end up not working but I will measure with the with the um, 
my oscilloscope what level of output each of them have and try and balance that. And if I feel like it's off, I'll adjust. Uh, and that, of course, I think that's quite often just really depends upon the circuit. You, you, you do an estimate and then you go from there. Um, but uh, also, uh, this all stuff's here. So effectively, this is a ground, this is a ground, and here's my ground. So I'll be kind of tying those grounds together. Uh, I also have to bring in uh, my high voltage in and connect it roughly here. And then uh, another wire will jump from there to here, and then another wire will jump from there over to, I don't remember, I think it, it's the one down here, uh, right there. So uh, this is my tone stack going off right here. Uh, I'm, I'm working on something down below. You can't see it, but it's just a little small little jumper board with the pots nearby. It's not beautiful. The whole idea for that will really be that, uh, you know, I'm, I've got some basic caps to do the different levels of filtering. Uh, um, if I have any problems with that, for now I can bypass the tone uh, stack. Just deal with it as is, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I still need to wire up also right here. These are my 220K as well that are for the other half. So I mentioned the power is coming in. I also have to bring power to these guys also from the uh, main H, uh, HT or B plus, as you call it. Uh, I don't need to have my full stack um, resistance and whatnot because, or I mean, sorry, cap uh, pool because I have a very high voltage um, power supply that I will bring in and I'm just going to put some basic caps that I have here linked in to reduce ripple and I have a one, uh, a 2k resistor that I'll put in line to also help reduce resistor kind of between what would be my A and B points but I don't need the full rail because this is coming in straight DC it's just a little dirty because uh, I think the caps in it are getting a little old so I'll be able to you know get that sorted out as well but the, that way I'll get in the good voltage I want which should be I think I remember in my design spec for this I was going to have it about 285 volts so I'll bring 285 here and then just jump them between the different power points and of course the different grounds and then I'll have an input that will come in to the you know the main input of the first tube over here and I'm getting pretty close to being done with it so uh, I do have an output transformer here that I will also wire up um, that's just one that's sort of sitting around it's only a 4k transformer but these are supposed to be about about 8 to 10 ish k for the output of these two push pull so what I'll do is you can uh, effectively if you do the math if I put in a 4k transformer and I connect to the 4 ohm tap that's like a uh, what is that about 100 to 1 ratio if I want I only have an 8 ohm speaker here so what I effectively do if I'm if you roughly put an 8 ohm speaker on that 4 ohm tap you're doubling it so that should reflect backwards to become about 8k on this uh, on these tubes you know, I've uh, had some four members double check that. I was going actually backwards, so they corrected me. I was thinking it was the other way around, where for eight ohms I wanted on the 16 ohm, but that is incorrect. You basically look at at 4K for a four ohm tap. You're effectively going to double the impedance from eight four to eight. It should reflect back the doubling the impedance of 8K as well. So, at any rate, um, we'll get that all tested out. I'll hook it up, but we'll put a scope on it and play with it and see what we get as well. But for now, I'm going to call it good for today. I'm getting a bit worn out. Uh, been at it for a good couple hours, so. I'll probably come back and hit it again tomorrow and try and finish it up and get this prototype ready to play out and see what we hear. So um, as you can see, I'll still have room to stick my tubes in here. I'm kind of blocking the light a little. Let me try it. You know, from this angle, I'm not going to leave it on this board, of course. And then, of course, here's my EF86 that will go in there. Uh, and then what I'll do, though, I have a, a wooden board, and I'm going to try and find a way to kind of tack that down to the wooden board so that I have a kind of semi-protected place. I will also run a large bus for my ground that's going to kind of sit down here. It's just a straight piece of wire that I'll connect into the ground on uh, another secondary transformer. By the way, the transformer I have doesn't have, obviously doesn't have the voltages that I'm going to need. Uh, it only has a single output at high voltage. But I did happen to scavenge this off of a, uh, what was the power supply? I can't remember. It's a, but it's a 12 volt um, transformer but I can put it into my variac and then run it the to, just till I get to about 6.3 volts that I want for my heater lines I'm gonna hook that up to my heater lines but I'll also ground on the the you know the earth wire of that well where I'll be grinding everything out so that's uh, how we're coming along and uh, getting closer all right so today I got a bit more done this is looking uglier as I go but um, I've got the output transformer, the two taps. I've kind of pulled over to the side here a little bit just because I'm uh, trying to, it's kind of off here, you can barely see it. But uh, So this area right here is the output transformer. I've got the brown and the, and the blue wires coming into pin 7 of those. And then that also jumpers over into pin 
Oh, I'm sorry, I think that's six. And then seven for the uh, grid, and the same on either side. Then I'm also running off of a secondary point, which is kind of in here. If You can, you probably can't see these, but I'm running a, a resistor. I was going to do a 2K, but I got the wrong wattage, so I've got a 22K. We'll see if this drops my voltage too much. Um, but effectively, I've got a small cap here that's, um, it's uh, I think it's 22 Oh, I think it's it's 247s in series, so I guess that would be double the voltage, but half, so it's about 20, you know, 5 or so, which is fine, um, or 24, whatever, I don't know, whatever 47 divided by 2 is, um, and uh, that will run, so here's my negative, here's my positive, the power coming in, and then the, the, you know, that goes into the transformer, that's what the red wire right here is, and then uh, I still haven't hooked up, these yellow wires uh, and green are going to be the output, but... Uh, at any rate, those come in, and then a, a secondary point after that, I'm bringing this orange wire over to each of these points that are the main uh, B+. Plus after that, and uh, I'm going to have to be very careful because, and no power is hooked up now, but you have to make sure with these kinds of test rigs that you're doing, you still don't allow things to touch where they don't belong. Uh, I've now also got a grounding wire. You can see the black grounding wire coming across to my ground here. This is a main ground bus across here. Uh, I'm trying to hook up all of my potentiometers here as well. This... Uh, they're kind of down in, in this area. You can kind of start to see those, but it's all really hodgepodge and slapped together. I've got my heaters hooked up. I tested those out and got the right voltages on that as well. So all in all, it's looking like I'm getting pretty close, but I still have to do a little bit more. Then I'll be able to slap in my tubes. Plug, I've got an input cable plugged into this right now already uh, that's uh, just going to be into my phone. I'm going to send a sine wave into it. And then this is what I'm starting to hook up the output. I put the ground. I have to go pull up the... I can't remember the exact transformer windings on this. I'm going to pull up which of the transformer windings. I've got the three colors here, but I don't remember of those three colors, which is it yellow, green, or orange that is the specific winding I need. So I'll, uh, I mean, I could do, I guess, you know, now that I think about that, I can show you one test you can use that is to help you understand roughly what uh, those windings would have is just to get the impedance of that. And you should be able to get a kind of a resistance rating. They won't be big, but it's enough to uh, if I set this guy up here on ohms, let's see if I, I don't know if that's visible. We'll look. It is. So effectively, if I just um, quickly clamp each one of these, I could get an idea. They're supposed to be 4, 8, and 16. So this one gives me 1.2 ohms. Again, like I said, it won't be exact, but if this one, the next one then goes higher than that, say, that's 1.1 ohms. That's a little lower, although it's a very subtle. And then this green one, Oops, what did I knock off? I don't know what I knocked off. Oh, I disconnected my ground. Sorry, let me just get that real quick again. And that last green winding is 0.9. So really to me that says um, the resistance goes in order this, this green one, then the yellow one, and then the orange one. They go by just 0.1 ohm each time. So green, is 0.9, yellow is 1.1, and then orange was the last one, which is one, well, it's saying about 1.1 as well. Hmm, I thought I got 1.2 before. At any rate, uh, you can tell by looking at that, though, what the, you know, the total winding ratio is as it climbs up, but that's so small it's going to be hard unless I had a really high sensitivity rating uh, meter, which I don't, to calculate the really low level ohms difference there to see if I can kind of calculate them, but... My best guess, though, is going to mean that that means the green one is going to be, um, with the lowest um, resistance, is probably going to be the 4 ohm. The yellow one will be the uh, 8 ohm, and then the orange one will be the 16, but we'll double check that when I, I'll get a chance to look at the actual diagram of the, tra of the transformer. So, uh, there you have it. It's coming along. Hopefully, I'll be able to power this up pretty soon and try it out. Um, quite the ugly hodgepodge of mess, but... The whole point of this is just a prototype. If it works out well and I like the sound of it, I'm going to grab a, uh, a build an actual you know layout, get myself a, a circuit board, and I'll pull a lot of these components and put right on it if they work well. If they don't, like this guy, definitely I'm not going to go on my circuit board, but um, I'll just replace that with a good one. But like a lot of these other, these are actually some really nice polypropylene caps. And as far as I understand, polypropylene are pretty nice for audio, but uh, I may be mistaken. If, if you guys know that, let me know. But I will effectively build out a full circuit of this guy as a real amp if, if this prototyping goes well and it sounds good. So this is my bedroom amp continues, so keep, keep, I'll keep you posted. Thanks, guys.